Hello, I'm Dr. Rick Shoebridge, President of Cleveland Clinic Medina Hospital. It's my pleasure today to speak with you about the vaccinations available for COVID-19. It's amazing to consider that just about one year from when this scourge uh, hit the United States, we we're able to sit here and talk about the availability of a vaccine. That's an incredible leap in medical science that I think we'll all remember years from now as one of the greatest achievements we've been a part of. What we need uh, to help us succeed in this area is to have as many citizens vaccinated as possible. We don't have enough vaccine to do everyone in the next couple of weeks. Therefore, we have a plan to do our vaccinations to our most vulnerable populations, which we've been working on for the past month or two. People who live in skilled nursing facilities, our high-risk healthcare workers, and people with chronic medical conditions or, or the elderly. We're doing a great job of getting through that population. In the coming months, we'll be doing a lot larger population of, of patients, including those who have chronic medical conditions who are otherwise younger. And then our last population will be the general population who are otherwise healthy. We anticipate that with the proper resources being applied nationwide, that we'll be able to complete this roughly by the end of summer. In that way, we can get the immunity necessary to avoid us having to go through another winter of ramping up cases of COVID-19. We have been blessed with at least two FDA approved vaccines at this time uh, from Pfizer uh, and Moderna. They both work the same way by getting your immune system to, to a sense that a protein has been produced so that an immune system reaction can be generated. This happens when the vaccine is put in the arm muscle and the arm muscle cells make that protein that is similar to the protein on the surface of the virus and present it on the outside of the cell so the immune system can see it. There's no infection from the virus and there's no DNA from the virus involved in the vaccination. There are no other ingredients in the vaccine other than that necessary to stabilize that protein as it's been injected in, into the, uh, under the skin. So that reaction uh, that takes place prepares your body for when you might be unfortunate enough to see a real COVID-19 virus um, hit, hit your nasal passage, your hands, or otherwise uh, get into your body. And then your immune system will be able to generate an immune reaction that protects you from the virus. It certainly is good at protecting against severe infection, which is what the most important reason for getting the vaccine is, and that in, in turn reduces the risk of death. It does also reduce the risk of getting even a mild infection. There are a few mild side effects that have to do with soreness at the injection site, or maybe some muscle aches, or maybe even a low-grade fever, but they're transient and they're easily managed. And the, these reactions are a little bit higher with the second dose, as you might imagine, because being that it's the same as the first, your immune system may have a little bigger reaction to the second dose than the first dose. Many patients have no reaction whatsoever. From the, from the vaccine, which is great. And what's especially important about these vaccines is they put so much uh, research into it in the what we call phase one and phase two trials, which is the safety part of the vaccine. The last thing you wanna do with a vaccine is do any harm. So a large number of patients from all racial and socioeconomic groups were included in the type phase one and phase two studies. And they found the safety for the vaccines to be excellent. Then comes the stage three studies, which have to do with does it work to prevent infection? And the data for both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are very good. Both have an over 95% chance of preventing severe disease from occurring to someone who's been vaccinated. So there's really a tremendous opportunity for us to get our citizens vaccinated and get it done in a few months time so that we can move Move, move past this pandemic that's been such a big scourge for our uh, population. So I'd like to at this time address some of the questions that have uh, popped up and uh, they'll be read to me and then I'll, I'll repeat them for you and uh, we'll give you some answers. If you've had COVID-19 uh, infection, it's generally considered that your, vac your, your immunity to reinfection is at least is six months in duration. So. Uh, you may not need the vaccine for up to six months uh, after, the, after you've had that infection, but you, it is recommended that you do get the vaccination at some point. 
So it's still going to be important to mask, social distance, and do frequent hand washing uh, after we get vaccinated because while we said that the vaccine, vaccine protects you against getting the infection inside your body, it doesn't do anything about whether or not you're able to carry the virus on the outside of your body, like on your hands or in your nasal passages. You may actually carry some without getting the infection yourself that could be passed to others if we don't continue to mask and social distance. So unfortunately, we have to keep up that part. But what I'd like to add about that is I think that Ohioans and uh, certainly here in Medina County, we've been doing an excellent job of that. And I think that's uh, contributed to some of our decrease in infections that we've had or seen over the past several months to weeks. Well, there's a number of places you can get it and it's increasing all the time. So what's recently happened is the, uh, the governor has made uh, vaccines available to local pharmacies. So your larger chains like CVS, Walgreens, and uh, Discount Drug Mart uh, will have it. Uh, they may not all have it now or there may be some difficulty getting it scheduled now, but as we continue to ramp up and get more vaccine, which is coming day by day, uh, you sh we should be able to get the populations in that need to be vaccinated. We are doing vaccinations at the Cleveland Clinic, um, several hundred a day. Um, not only our patients, but anyone who signs up uh, at my clinic, uh, clevelandclinic.org for a MyChart account can also be on the list to be invited to get the vaccination here at Cleveland Clinic. It really doesn't matter where you get it. Even the health department could be a viable option for you. Um, it's all covered by the United States government, so it's available uh, anywhere and anywhere you get it is equally uh, a good way to go. Both of the currently available FDA um, vaccines are uh, very similar in, in what we call efficacy, which is how well they work, which is extremely good. And then uh, the Johnson & Johnson product, which we expect will be uh, approved soon, which is only a one-shot vaccine, has a very similar uh, risk, uh, rate of preventing severe disease, which is exactly what you want. There's an app uh, that the health department is using to uh, schedule their appointments for vaccine. Um, and then you could also uh, go to the state website to find out where the other uh, um, pharmacies are that are giving it in our area. Uh, we know that if folks who have gotten one shot of the vaccine are about 50% protected against getting COVID, but there have been some unlucky patients who have developed a COVID-19 infection after the first shot. If that's the case, um, if, it's with, if it's getting close to the time for the second injection, it would be best to quarantine consistent with state re regulations and local health, health department uh, rules such as 14 days, 10 days with a test um, before you come in to get your second shot so that you don't put others at risk at the immunization facility. Fortunately, there is some flexibility on the timing of the second shot. We like to see it at four weeks, but it's still effective up to six weeks after. So there you can, uh, that may need to be adjusted if there is a COVID infection going on uh, so that you can get your second shot. Um, still would be a, important to get that second injection. Uh, from what we're hearing both at the, at, the, from, at the national level and also from our leaders here at the Cleveland Clinic is that there does not appear to be an increased risk to pregnant women uh, to become uh, COVID vaccinated uh, during pregnancy. From the initial uh, reports we had of anaphylaxis in very, very few individuals, if you have a history of severe uh, allergic reactions, you may want to uh, think twice about getting it. However, uh, any, any vaccination location, you're re required to stick around for 15 minutes after your injection to be observed for any signs of uh, allergic reaction. And all the immunization sites are staffed by registered nurses who know how to administer any medication that might be necessary if there's a reaction happening. So the, the immunization is available to all, all United States citizens uh, or, and residents of the United States. So um, registration is not contingent upon any income level or insurance coverage. Uh, all lo vaccination locations would be happy to invite anyone who is in the proper risk group for vaccination when their time comes. For those who are, wish to get an immunization at the Cleveland Clinic, you do not have to be a Cleveland Clinic patient. Uh, you just have to have a Cleveland Clinic MyChart account set up, which is easy to do over the internet, uh, and it just takes a few clicks to get that set up. We have seen in recent weeks the COVID variants occurring, uh, not only in the UK and South Africa, but also here in the United States and spreading. It's expected that uh, these variants may become the dominant strain of COVID-19 in the coming weeks to months. 
Uh, from what we've seen so far, the protection from the vaccine for these variants is good, but we don't have the definitive uh, studies on that at this time. When you are a vaccinated person and you are not carrying the vaccine or the virus into your home, uh, then you're protecting others. Also, there's evidence that people who may come in contact with somebody with COVID-19 who have had the vaccine, if they get it in their nasal passages, their carriage rate or the amount of virus that they're carrying is much, much lower than an unvaccinated person uh, because uh, it has to replicate within the cells and so that's why it can be so much of a bigger problem for unvaccinated people as a risk. So great, great point. It's important to protect everyone, not only yourself, but others uh, with the vaccine. And when we get to you know 70% or greater of our population vaccinated, we have a much greater chance of really chasing the virus out of existence uh, as, a, as a major health problem. For, for more information about the coronavirus, uh, you feel free to contact us at uh, clevelandclinic.org. On our homepage, you'll see a uh, uh, COVID-19 link right there in front that can take you to an information page. There's also uh, resources from the state of Ohio and also from the Medina County Health Department. I would like to thank uh, everyone who's seeing this video for all the hard work you've done to protect yourself and others by masking, social distancing, and frequent hand washing over the past few months. Uh, we're gonna need to continue that for a little while, but please uh, take, take uh, part in this extraordinary historic effort to uh, rid us of this virus by getting your vaccine when, when it's available to you. I thank you for, for that, and uh, we look forward to partnering, partnering with you for, in good health for many years to come.